and I want to say I want to say something so the listeners can hear. As far as uh, you know, you wish the you said racism doesn't exist and all that stuff. The reason why I, I want everybody to know that Mr. Jesse is on to something because I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. It's kind of still segregated. I, I've done very bad things to other races because I thought they were racist and because what I was taught when I was young, you know, I was taught about all this racism and yeah. I've seen all the slavery movies and all this crazy stuff. But when I started growing up, I started and I started treating everybody and treating it like it's not racism. I started to actually see what's going on. Yes, you know? sir. I wasn't even supposed to make it to 21. I, I've been in so many life or death situations. Like you wouldn't believe. So it's like, I wasn't even supposed to survive. Like it's it's a lot going on out here, and I don't I don't I don't think racism is what's stopping us as black people anymore. That's right, man. Wow. How old are you now? I'm 27. You know, you're blessed. God is with you, because had God not been with you, you wouldn't have made it through all that. And you're absolutely right. It's not about this il false illusion of racism. It's about right versus wrong, good versus evil. It's your character. You either have it or you don't. It has nothing to do with your color at all. Yes. All we need is love. Everybody is so angry. Yes. Everybody. Yep. Extremely angry. I don't even see how they're getting into argument. I listen to your conversations, and people are already yelling and I don't understand how they expect to get their points across or to, for people to even listen to them with the way they yell and they call you names. And I'm, I don't even see where that's actually necessary. If we all are adults and we are actually trying to come to a solution you know, to right. the problems, how are we going to go get to a solution when fighting is we fighting each other? I don't understand that at all. Well, when they're angry like that, one, they, they are blind and can't see, and they have the mind of their father, the devil. And the devil is trying to prevent them from allowing any— and they don't, they're not even aware that this is what's happening, but he's trying to prevent them from allowing any truth to get out at all because the devil knows that if truth got out, it's going to change some hearts and minds. It's not going to change everybody, but it's going to change those who want to change— and he doesn't want that to happen. So he make these people yell and scream, act out. He keep control of them, and he prevent or tries to prevent truth from getting out. So that's why they're doing it. They literally, remember when you had the anger living in Baltimore, you thought white people were your problem, you couldn't really see. And at the time, no one could convince you that you were wrong. It wasn't, you weren't able to make that change until you were ready to see the truth. And that's why you're starting to wake up. And so they can't see it until they're ready for it. Yes. It's I not... want people to, un people should understand. I, 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 at a young age, when I, when I was uh, about 13, I, I ran up to a Mexican guy and I punched him right in his face. Wow. And I told him, give me everything you got. I told him, I, hello, you can hold me? on, hold on, uh, uh, Juan, let me take a break. Do not hang up. Hold on. Back in a moment. I want to go back to Juan, a first-time call out of New York, who is talking about he lived in Baltimore. He had all this anger. He thought racism existed and all this stuff. He realized now it doesn't. He's having a good life. And Juan, thank you for yep. holding. You wanted to ask me, oh, t finish the story. You say you walked up to a Mexican, punched him in the face, and what happened? Yes, yes. When I was young, about 13, uh, me and my um, friends— we used to go to this park in, in Baltimore called Patterson Park, and it, it was the it's a park. It separates uh, the Mexicans and you know the mixed people are on one side, blacks are on one side, and the white people are on one side. It's actually like four sides. Right. And uh, uh, we used to go there just to rob them for like bikes and their money and stuff like that. And you know I really wasn't into it, but my friends were good, so I went with them. But one day, you know, they were like, you know, you're not doing it, da 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 da, da and all that stuff. So I, I went and about it and showed them that I was about it. But what, this is what happened: I, I ran up to a dude. He looked older. He looked probably in his thirties. He's Mexican. He's he had weight on him. What I did, I ran up to him and I just punched him in his face and I said, "Give me everything you got." And and he looked me square in my eyes and he bawled like a baby. Like he just started crying. And wow. he couldn't even speak English. 
he started trying to talk to me, and I just felt so bad. Like, I felt horrible. I, I just didn't understand why I was doing anything at all. Like, I felt, I felt empty, really empty. The, after that, I just, I, I just decided to, you know, not do stuff like that anymore. You know, I, I realized that it wasn't what I thought it was. Everybody was teaching me that all, all the other races was against me. And it's, that's just not what it is. 